Section 8.5, testing a hypothesis about a standard deviation, sigma. So remember when we're testing a hypothesis, it's always about the population parameter, in this case, a standard deviation. And the symbol for a population standard deviation is sigma, the Greek lowercase letter s. First, let's go ahead and talk about critical values. Since we're testing a claim about a standard deviation, we will be using the chi-squared table. And because of the way that this table is structured, finding critical values requires us by focusing on whether the test is a right, left, or two-tailed test. So for the critical value, case one, a right-tailed test, we'll be going to column alpha, so all of the significance level, and row n minus one. This is the easiest case. So as I look at this information that I was given, when asked to find a hypothesis critical value. First, I would notice sigma, and that tells me that I'll be using the chi-squared table. Next, I'll notice the greater than symbol, which tells me I have a right tail test. I'll be going to row 18 because I'll be using degrees of freedom n minus 1, and so 19 minus 1 is 18. And lastly, alpha, which is the significance level, tells me the column to go to. So using the chi-squared table, row 18, column 1.0, I see the number 25.989, my critical value. Case two is when you have a left tail test, and so you'll still be going to row n minus one because degrees of freedom doesn't change. But remember, the column is area to the right. And since this is a left tail test, we'll need the complement of that amount, which would be one minus alpha. So to find this particular critical value, First, I see that the alternate hypothesis has sigma, so I know I'm using the chi-squared table. Since n was 24, I'll be in row 23. But the important thing to notice here is that since I have a left tail test, alpha, the significance level, is not the column I'm going to. I need to go to column 1 minus alpha, so 1 minus 0 0.01, which is 0.99. So on the chi-squared table, I'm going to go to row 23, column point 99, and find 10.196. Now remember, this is still a positive number, even though this is a left tail test, since we're using the chi-squared table. And the chi-squared table starts at zero and only has positive values. And lastly, we have case three. What if we have a two-tail hypothesis test? Then don't forget that we're gonna get two answers, so we'll be going to two different columns and degrees of freedom will stay the same. So again, the alternate hypothesis has sigma, so I'm testing a standard deviation and thus using the chi-squared table. Not equal to tells me I have a two-tail test, so I'm gonna get two answers. And remember, it is not plus or minus for the two critical values since the table does not contain negative values, as we just mentioned. Since I have to find two answers, think back to confidence intervals, like how I define chi-squared right and chi-squared left. Right is always the easiest. So for chi-squared right, I'm going to go to row 6, column point 025. Wait, if alpha is 0 0.05, why did I say I'm going to column point 025? Well, remember, alpha needs to be split between the two tails, so I need to divide alpha in half. 0 0.05 divided by 2 is 0 0.025. So row 6, column point 0 0.025 is the value 14.449. Next, I need to find the equivalent of chi-squared left. I'm still in row six, and maybe you can use the rainbow effect to go to the correct column on the left-hand side and know that it's column point 975. Otherwise, if you were doing this by hand, you would have done one minus alpha over two, or maybe just jumped to one minus 0 0.025, since you had just found that value, to get your 0.975. So in row six, column point 975, you should find the value 1.237, 
And as you go to answer, don't forget, we just said there's going to be two answers. We usually list the smaller answer first and then the larger answer. And you want to be sure that it doesn't make it look like it's the range of all numbers in between that. It's not the 1.237 up to 14.449. It's just those two individual numbers. And lastly, when finding a test statistic for a chi-squared test, the formula is going to be n minus 1 times s squared, so the sample standard deviation squared, divided by sigma squared. Now this might look similar to confidence intervals, except for you'll notice there's no square roots, like in confidence intervals. And also in the denominator, it was always a chi-squared left or right in the denominator, whereas here it's actually sigma squared.